God's completion, and here it is. Thus, a man and woman in unity reveal the nature of God and the relation of God. They are both necessary, patriarch and matriarch, to express fully the divine nature of God. And so let's go back for a moment. Can I take you back for just a second to see how mama's called forth and how she's going to arise? Slap somebody. Say, I'm going somewhere tonight. I'm going somewhere. Because God's earliest blueprint must govern. It must be the paradigm. It must be how we see things. So the book of Genesis is the seed plot of all biblical revelation. When you ever want to see the pattern, you can see how everything is laid out in Genesis. And Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 and 2 states, God blessed Adam and who? Eve. Ready? This is important. And called what? Their name Man, So he called their name Ha-Adam. He called their name. So in the day they were created. So God did not just, just give his command to rule to one person, but to all humanity. And before Eve was ever released out of Adam, he blessed them and called their name, including the soon-to-be-made woman. So in the beginning, the thing, the only thing that God said was not good was aloneness. Man's aloneness is the only thing. Because God understood if we're going to do what we really have to do, then it's going to take the coming together because there's no male nor female in God. And it's going to take the matriarch and the patriarch. And I'm, I'm about to get you in your position. Because one thing I do understand, I understand what it is to walk in a covering as a matriarch in this earth and to rise up in a position of Deborah to cause life to come forth in regions. I understand what it is to release through the prophetic utterance you into your gifting and your call and your cause in, your, in the earth. So in the beginning, when the only thing God said is not good is man's aloneness. So this woman's fashion to be man's help me. Now we always think in terms of marriage, but marriage is just a mimic of the divine institution. It's the only other sacred institution that is divine to God, which is the church and the family. And so it is just a, a mirror portrait of a sacred institution. So when he's saying it's a help me, God's creation was not complete without woman. She's not an afterthought. She's not a byproduct, but she's a, she's a part of the original plan. And God's initial mandate for all humanity, man and woman, was to fill the earth and to rule, dominate. He said, I want you to dominate. I want you to take it. You're going you're to have five commands here. But any supremacy was, was swallowed up in unity, that they would be one. And God's command was given to who, guys? It was given to them. Somebody say them. In Genesis 2.18, Eve was Adam's helpmate. I need a guy here. I saw Stephanie. I just need somebody that can help me. Get one. Could you, you mind helping me, sir? You mind helping me? Come on, run on up here. Yeah, that's it. Like Adam would be ready to rock and roll. All right. So here's what it means. Helpmate is this. The word meet indicates um, that she was in his presence face to face or fronting. So let me show you something. Headship always has the final authority because there has to be one person that has as the headship but because she he's headship doesn't mean she way back here okay that's not what that meant she's a help me now let me show you she's face to face in front of him we're gonna help a lot of people out and get things in order that's not she's in his face it means that when your headship and I'm face to face you ready I see what you see and once I see what you see I can hear what you hear and once I can hear what you hear I can talk what you talk and now that I can see your vision pastor and hear what you're hearing and speak what you're speaking my heart is knit to you and once my heart's knit to you then I have the privilege to stand side by side and if we can stand side by side come on help me out I got your back that means I'm covered there's no place the enemy is going to come in. Come on, you got to help me out. You got to be mobile here. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It means I'm just having fun. Thank you. What it means there is that I'm knit to you because the armor of God says this. The only pl place that is exposed is your backside. So the only way not to be exposed is when you get in your position and you allow headship and you begin to see what he sees and hear what he hears and speak what he speaks. Then your heart is knit and together we are one. And now your bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, which means now there is a together unitedness. Now nothing can come against us because we're united. Help me out. That means this women's ministry has Pastor Clint's heart in it. 
And Carrie, we're just hearing what is, what's he saying? What's he speaking? Because as we're grabbing it and implementing it and birthing it, we're about to see a release in our families. We're about to see a release in this city. We're about to see a release over our children. We're about to see release over in the Baptist church and Presbyterian and with the heathens and down on Church Street. We're going to see a release in Disney. We're going to see a release at the Magic Game. We're going to see a release everywhere because we are speaking what he's speaking because we're hearing what he's hearing because our heart so when he hurts we hurt when he rejoices we rejoice because we're carrying forth what God has commanded out of the visionary we birth it you better slap somebody say you don't have a clue who you're sitting next to so so the word help is not a weak word because it's actually frequently used in reference to the Lord himself it's not a degrading position. In, in fact, it often means superior in strength. And it doesn't mean that, you, that you're, it doesn't mean a superiority. It just means this, that your design as a woman means you have an ability to carry things through endurance. Because when we have to birth, you've got to have an ability not to quit, not to get flaking, not to give up, not to be. The Bible says you're not even Abraham's or Sarah's daughters if you're struck with hysteria. Ooh just silly all the time look at somebody say no more silliness so verse 7 it says the inhabitants of the villages ceased they ceased in Israel and they ceased until I Deborah arose and ceased literally means they were lacking or idle or they failed it, it means they were unoccupied so in essence the people were so oppressed that they lost their joy for living now I want you to think here because it's more than us coming in and just shouting it's more than us just coming in. It's us being empowered to go out and to release what God is doing in us so he can do it through us. So there was, they, they were so subdued and so oppressed here the spirit of God and where the nation has been in the last few years that they were idle. They weren't moving. There was no movement. And it literally means there that the villagers, and in the Hebrew the word is warriors, those that were warriors. Now, warriors are people that take ground. It's your Joshua and Caleb. Your warriors had become unoccupied. They'd become still. They'd become idle. When warriors, when greatness gets stilled, then we never see the purpose and plan come to pass. The devil is a liar because I'm not going to die and not eat of the good of the land. We're going to see what God has promised for Orlando. We're going to see what God's promised for our families. We're going to see what God's promised for Tampa. Can you hear it? When there's no activity and no movement, no action, no implement, implementation, then God will always raise up a Deborah. One that, you ready? One that can arouse. That's what it literally means. One that can call forth emotions, feelings with response, to awaken and to stimulate. You better have an understanding what you've been called to. You've been called to stir some things up. When everybody's in this darkness and this heaviness and this oppression because of the economy and because of the condition of things and because of, of the sinful nature of man that has taken a, the many things by force, you've been called to arouse some things and say, no, 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 we're not going to lower our standard. No, 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 no. I don't know, no, no, no. The devil is a liar. Go ahead. Do an investigation on me and clear me a few years later. But I'm going to tell you God blesses you and I'm not going to be in a million dollar flow. I'm going to be in a billion dollar one. Do whatever you want want to do because I'm not going to lower and put God in some little small box and say I've got to be regulated to my five acres and I can't do anything outside of this no I didn't come to fit in I came to take over I came to be who God called me to be heaven is a choice I make on earth it's not a place that I find I'm going to see heaven release the kingdom of God release I'm going to see his goodness his rule his reign I'm going to walk in what God's ordained for me I'm not going to sit here broke by and disgusted the curse of poverty has been removed everything that Jesus died for I'm not gonna sit there and live in I don't have to be depressed I don't have to be down I don't have to be bound I don't have to be poor I don't have to struggle I don't have to be in that condition I don't have to always have something against me no 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 my God's a faithful God and there's something that he died to give me called abundant life it means I'm gonna have superior in quality I'm gonna have excessive I'm gonna have superior in quantity it means I'm sorry if you don't like it but my God's no respect or persons he'll bless you just like he wants to bless her he'll bless this church just like he wants to pour out 
his blessing upon all flesh. He wants to do something great in your life. Struggle is overrated. Your tomorrow is going to be much better than your yesterday. Let it go. God wants to do something big in you. He wants to do something great in you. He wants to do something great through you. You better get ready. Deborah, it's time you get up. I said, it's time you get up. You better look at somebody and say, Deborah's about to get up. Mama's about to arise. Mama's about to come up out of that complacency. I'm not going to sit down and make my God a small God. I'm not going to bring my God down to a government level. I'm not going to bring him down to a man level. I'm not going to bring him down to a circumstance level. If God is able and willing and capable, then whatever he declared and whatever he said, I'm going to bring my life up to it. Everything's got to raise to his standard. I'm not going to play small for you. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do it. You can get mad, but you're going to have to get over it because I sever those things in my life that try to hold me back and hold me out. I was held back and held out too long. I'm sorry. I'm going to minister to you, but I'm not going to hang with you because I need somebody that can see what I can see and hear what I can hear and speak what I can speak and dream with me and go with me because we're taking Orlando by force. We're going to own what are we going to own? That place next to Amway? What's that place? What's the arena here? Amway? We're going to own the Amway arena. All I need is about two to three women for that to hit their spirit. I mean really hit your spirit. You're just waiting for your credit score to get up. Why? God's about to bless you with houses that you didn't even build. Oh, see, you, you, you're you sitting there going, it can't happen. Yes, it can happen. Yes, it can. Ten years ago, next month, I stood and I signed a multi-million dollar contract. Obligated myself, went on BET with a single black curtain drop with one uh, a camera, with rent to rent to own furniture, with a secretary that typed 23 words per minute, with no P.O. box, not a computer, not a database, and everybody said it couldn't happen. But they didn't, they, they didn't know that I was a Deborah because they told the bumblebee, I'm about to preach in this place, they told the bee, you can't fly. But it was a day late and a dollar short because scientifically, the bee doesn't have the wingspan. It doesn't have the ability to fly. But the problem is nobody informed the bee that it couldn't fly. So every day that bumblebee flies. By the way, Deborah, did I tell you what your name means? Your name means bee. Your name means bee. So there are things that you're not supposed to be able to do. But your name shows me your nature. It means you can fly. You can do the impossible. You can do what man said you can't do. But in the name of Jesus, you're getting up out of that. There are no limitations. There are no hindrances. There's nothing that's going to hold you back. Let me tell you about your nature. Your nature here, Deborah, is that you, you prepare. You homestead. You nest things. You bond things. You lay eggs till the day you die because you're fertile. It means you produce. You lay over 2,000 eggs because you're a producer. You produce. If I didn't produce every day, I would have died. But I have to do something. I've got to. I've got to. There's too much in my womb to sit there and let it die. I'm too fertile. There's too much on the inside of me not to birth out of me. I see it. I see nations shaking for his glory. I see sons and daughters. I see Lakin with God's glory. I see an education center. I see owning the networks. I see ministry in Hollywood and New York. You bet I see the Amway. I'm coming to preach at Faith World at the Amway Center. I see it. Day, but here's what's greatest and then go ahead and move this over just a little bit thank you guys here's what's greatest about your name never you ready here's the unique thing the unique thing about a bee and and, and and that bee is not just any bee it's a queen bee and don't make me talk about in Joshua I think it's 24 where, where God said I send a hornet into the enemy basically after the two kings that could not be defeated and without bow and without sword they were killed and they were slain because whenever a hornet a queen bee goes in you capture the enemy because you do because here's what your name really is you ready virtuous woman because 
because this is what the queen being, she's all nervous in these boots, aren't you? Come on, Amber, we practice back there. Here's what it means. Because that queen bee does a dance, and it's known for its dance. And when it begins to know that there is food, or there is blessing and supply, that bee starts to dance, and it gets a vibration in it, because it can hear, and it can sense, and it can smell, and its wings begin to vibrate. And once it starts to vibrate, it starts arousing everything. Did you know that when you've been praising here at Faith World the way you have, you've got this whole region stirred up, you've got without walls stirred up, you've got Lakeland stirred up, you've got First Baptist stirred up. My God, when you start doing that, and when it starts vibrating with its wings, it starts spinning up. spinning around like that it starts arousing motion and things that were idle and things that were dormant and things of warriors start coming up let me tell you something Deborah you're calling men to the forefront right now your praise is breaking through an atmosphere right now it's causing some things in the region to be broken it's causing leaders to come to the forefront it's causing a stir between the men and the woman of God to rise to who God has called them to be is the more supply there is the greater the harvest there is the more intense the dance gets that's why you guys have been in a radical praise because your praise has been prophetic to this nation I'm saying something that I hope somebody can hear your praise has been prophetic to this nation you are sending a signal out to say look what God is about to do we're not talking about just breaking dead we're talking about giving cities we're talking about giving you Amway buildings we're talking about you better hear what I'm saying that there's gonna be a transference into the people of God that you're not gonna lack any good thing I'm not talking materialism. I'm talking your family's going to be saved. I'm talking you're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be blessed coming in. You're going to be blessed. Coming. That's why you went through what you went through. Because the enemy never wanted you to. Because Deborah, when you get up and start dancing your dance. My heart was broken, but I got up anyway. My mind was confused, I got up anyway. They lied on me, I kept getting up anyhow, B. They wrote 49 articles, I kept dancing. They did an investigation, I got up. They rumored about me, I got up. I had to bury my daughter, I got up. My husband and I divorced, I got up anyway. I had to go to a place of isolation, I kept getting up. You better hear what I'm saying, because nothing could keep a virtuous woman down. I went through what I went through to show you what you're getting ready to receive. You can't. Come on, there's something getting ready to release. I don't even have to lay hands on you right now. I dare you to get out of your seat and put a praise on. Teresa, you better get up here and help me, because there's a release coming right now you into the place that God's called you and purposed you, you better let the enemy know that you know who you are and you know who you are and you're going to take your position. Come on, intercessor, rise up. Come on, Deborah, get up. Come on, Bertha, get up. Come on, Dreamer, get up in the name of Jesus. Your best day is here. You're going you're gonna to rouse things up. You're about to stir something up. You're going to stir up strong emotion. You're going to stir up a passion for God again. You're going to stir up a fight for God again. You're going to stir up a possession. Hey! And this is what happens, and I'm through. Come on off, guys. This is what happens. Deborah, when she gets up, all village life ceased. Till I got up. Let me tell you what the devil's been scared to death about. That you would ever get up. He hit you so hard. He didn't want you to get up, Paulette. He didn't want you to get up, B. And then he never wants you to get up. Because if you get up, you, your nature 
sends a vibration into the atmosphere. See, I make up words in the pulpit. I mispronounce people's names. I chop up scripture, but I can hear things and I can dance, baby. There's a rhythm that's deep in my soul that I can hear by the spirit and I know how to move with it. And when I start moving, things start happening. They start shifting. It's your time. It's your time, Deborah. Dance your dance. Come on, Deborah. Release what's on the inside of you. Let God be God. Hey, baby, it's okay. It's okay. Pastor Paul is good. Just let him go. Let him go. Just let these off. It's okay, baby. Just let him go. Because they're about to send a motion. I'm not going to lay hands on them yet. Come on, Teresa. Start praising. Come on, start putting on something in this house. Deborah, all I'm doing is giving you opportunity right now. For God says the enemy has been defeated. When you begin to walk in your nature and you begin to walk out who you are, there's something going into the atmosphere that is releasing. There's a sister's gift on this side that is going to get stirred up by your obedience on this side. When you begin to walk it, come on, you begin to praise. Come up here, guys. Get up here. Come on. Come on, company of Deborah. Y'all, come on. You. Yeah. <laughs>